Thanks for stopping by guys and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Today we're going to be looking at a new MBT. Now I know the MBT series has been on a hiatus for quite some time now and I think I finally have something worth showing. I have been working on the MBTs since then but there really hasn't been much success lately until now with the MBT Mark 35 Goblin. Now some people may already be um, aware of this tank, I have been talking about it on my Discord channel and a few other places as well. But it is pretty much purpose built to replace the Wyvern. It's kind of been a running joke that the Wyvern is such a good tank that it will never be replaced, but hopefully the Goblin gives the Wyvern a run for its money. Or, this is more specifically a Drake. Um, I haven't really touched on it much in most videos. But I have been making different variations of the Wyvern with some of the new tech to help keep it relevant, such as the Drake and the Drago. So let's go ahead and look at the Goblin itself with a little bit more depth. Let's go ahead and hop into the seat. There's some steps here. And take a quick look around. You will notice two main things. First is the active denial system, which are these guns here. And you will notice the camo is a bit differently. Um, I am kind of testing out this camo since a lot of people do use the darker camos in my uh, little tank battle community that I have. So I wanted to try it out for myself and see how well it works. So for the most part this has a lot of the same features, a lot of the same things the Wyvern does with some added, uh, some added features but mostly just improvements on old things. So kind of the two big discoveries slash changes is first off the active denial system essentially what this is is it shoots a high concentration fire of spuds at the enemy you want to try and aim it for their gun mantlet which means whenever they shoot a round at you it has to travel through this beam to hit you and the longer it's in this beam the higher the chance is that you can actually disable their round either by making it explode getting it knocked off course, or doing something else to the round that makes it ineffective against you. Now unfortunately I don't have any footage of the Goblin using this system, but I do have some test footage I recorded at another date um, to give you an idea of what it is going on behind the scenes. I kind of do plan on making another video going a little bit more in depth on the active denial system. Um, another thing to note with it is it is not attached directly to the gun in any way. Behind this little panel here, oh, I fell off the tank. Behind this little panel here, you can find the actual sensors which scan the gun's angle and adjust the active denial system accordingly. So the active denial system itself technically isn't stabilized, but it will always try and match the gun's position, so it is to some respects. And it is hooked up to the aiming machine gun so that whenever you fire the aiming machine guns you also fire the denial system. But if you don't like that, you do have a little logic gate there. If you press 8, it will turn that off. And now you're only shooting the aiming guns. Turn that back on. And you have the denial system. Um, some other things to note about the armament is the fact that all of the elevation and rotation mechanisms have been compacted down to fit right here in the back of the gun so that we don't have that big weakness that the Wyvern had where even if you did survive a shot, most likely your elevation mechanism was completely trashed and you could not aim at anything. That was a big downside with Wyvern. Hopefully this is fixed because if you've lost your elevation mechanism, you've lost your whole gun at this point. So two new discoveries with armor that help the survivability of this out. One of which is putting your seat on a bearing statically like this for some reason increases its survivability significantly. Um, in testing we've got some really weird results, a lot of which we can't fully explain. However, just having your seat on a bearing makes it really robust. Um, even these explosives here going off won't always kill the seat. I've actually had the tank just gone, like half the tank ripped off and the seat somehow survived which is a bit weird. And some people have started adopting it, even though it's not a fully understood system yet. So it is here, hopefully it will increase the survivability of the Goblin here. And the third is Ibeam Armor. Now Ibeam Armor is not a new thing, however it kind of got 
abandoned by a lot of people, including myself. Um, but some new interesting effects have been noted. For some reason, I beam armor doesn't let explosive the explosive radius pass through it in the same way that maintenance ship blocks does. So it's kind of hard to show or explain, but simply being, if you have something important, say a seat, on the opposite side of two maintenance ship blocks, the seat will probably explode whenever the round explodes. But if you have a seat on the opposite side of two I-beams, the seat likely won't explode. And th the testing has shown promise, however it's not 100% reliable, so that's the only reason I'm really not showing it in depth. But hopefully mix that with the seat on a bearing and this tank should be extremely survivable, plus the active denial system. In tests, we have been able to get the goblin to survive about seven rounds four of which were taken out by the active denial system, two of which were taken up by the armor, and it was that seventh round that actually finally killed the tank. So I'm not sure what else there really is to say about it. It is my standard tank design. Um, it's got the four round auto loader, iron sights, groove sight, main aiming sight, still has the same power. And there goes the wyvern. But hopefully it will be an overall better tank than the Wyvern and the Drake were. As much as I love the Wyvern, I think it's about time for it to be retired. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I mentioned the camo yet or not. Um, simply put, I'm using a bit of a darker camo since it's just kind of a popular thing in the tank building community. I usually use a lighter camo to match the grassy plains like this. However, I have noticed that the darker camo does blend in a lot better in situations such as this where I am on a hill with a bit of a darker camo to it and some shadows. Um, so far the white or, or the sorry about that. So far the goblin I keep getting names messed up. So far the goblin has passed its initial trials and is getting ready for its battle trials, and it won't be till then till we get to really see just how well this tank works. So fingers crossed and high hopes that this may be the next main battle tank to see active and continuous service. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this episode. If you did, please leave a like. Any suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoy the channel, enjoy what I'm doing. Please subscribe, it helps out a lot. And right now, shares help the channel the most. So if you do want to help out the channel, please share this episode with a friend. Until next time, thanks for stopping by, thanks for sticking around, and until next time, peace.